Securing your AWS environment with automated DSPM. I know there's a lot of acronyms out there, so if anyone's not familiar with DSPM, this is Data Security Posture Management. And we'll get into a lot more about what that means for you, your organization, your data, your AWS environment throughout today's presentation. I just want to give a little background about myself. I'm the Director of Cloud and Security Architecture at Veronis. I've been with Veronis for over nine years now, and it's been very interesting for me to see throughout my nine years how our customers have adapted to migrating to the cloud. When I first started at Veronis, you know, the cloud was relatively new. Everyone was really focused on their data living on-prem and Windows file shares and NAS devices, SQL databases on-prem. Uh, and obviously now organizations have had this huge cloud transformation and there's been a, some really unique security challenges that have come with it. There's some amazing flexibility in the cloud, uh, but that introduces a lot of risk, which we'll talk about today. So with my role at Veronis, I really have two responsibilities, helping our customers navigate these complex cloud security challenges and making sure that they are actually securing the data that lives in AWS. Uh, but also from the security architecture side, I manage our incident response team. So we help our customers when they're going through a potential security incident, understanding the impact of that and differentiating between a security incident and a data breach. Those are two very different conversations with different responses. Uh, so, you know, not just focusing on the proactive security, but the reactive capacity as well as we try to identify potential data breaches in our cloud infrastructure. And this is a very important mission for us. You know, this is really our goal at Veronis. We're a data security company. We want to help our customers protect their data. And it's because our world runs on data. Every single industry depends on data. Healthcare depends on data, energy depends on data, legal depends on data, manufacturing, higher ed, government. Whatever industry you might be involved in or you know, work alongside, data is you know, really the backbone uh, of their industry. I can't really think of any industry that does not rely on data. Maybe, uh, maybe some fine artists out there, painters, maybe they can get by without much reliance on data. But other than that, data is incredibly important. It's, uh, it's what makes our businesses run. And AWS is home to some incredible data, right? Uh, Netflix, I'm sure everyone here is a Netflix subscriber. I was watching some Netflix in my hotel room last night, winding down, over 220 million subscribers. That really speaks to the scalability of what's possible with AWS. You know, uh, NASA, the James Webb, uh, Deep Space Telescope giving us this amazing images from beyond our solar system. F1 also uh, really involved with AWS. I don't know if there's any uh, F1 fans out there. The Canadian Grand Prix last weekend was very exciting. Probably a lot of, a lot of these companies here today uh, sponsor a lot of F1 teams, so I think there's a lot of collaboration there. But, uh, you know, it's, it's a data vault. AWS is ultimately a data vault with some of the world's most valuable and exciting and entertaining data. Uh, but we have to really treat that data with the security that it deserves. And it's challenging because a single misconfiguration can put millions of records at risk. So I'm going to tell you a story about one of our, our customers. This was a healthcare organization that processes millions of clinical records with the help of AWS. And there was a security rule change that left a Postgre database uh, exposed to the internet. And this kind of exposure can go unnoticed. Security and IT teams, if they're not closely watching this, uh, you know, and they're not interacting closely with maybe the cloud infrastructure team, that different organizations have better collaboration between departments than others. Um, you know, this vulnerability could go unnoticed and that data inside that database is now at risk. It can be millions of clinical records stolen, fraudulent medical claims, millions of identities stolen, probably millions of dollars in, you know, financial impact from either fines and lawsuits. And I've seen this in my, in my role on the security architecture side of Ronis. Healthcare is constantly under attack. I mean, threat actors love to target hospitals and healthcare organizations because they have all this sensitive, you know, health record information. Uh, it's, a, it's, you know, if you're trying to exfiltrate data and, and ransom it or, you know, demand some sort of payment, leak it on the dark web, then a healthcare organization is a great organization to target. Uh, we've seen these organizations that have to deal with these massive data breaches, but thankfully that is not how this story played out because they were monitoring their system very closely. They saw this uh, new exposure, and not only were they able to find the misconfiguration, but they were able to validate that no data had been exploited. So yes, there was this exposure, but we can say definitively, no data was accessed, no data was leaked. This was a security incident. It was not a data breach. That's a very important distinction. And this is the ability to do this and understand that this one misconfiguration did not ultimately lead to a data breach is really the power 
of an automated DSPM solution. So, kind of said this at the start, but AWS is incredibly flexible. It's, it's one of its benefits. I mean, we, a lot of our customers that we speak to uh, might be in multiple clouds. They might be in AWS and Azure and GCP, but no one's not in AWS, all right? If they have multiple clouds, AWS is a guaranteed part of their, their, their cloud infrastructure. Um, and it's because you can do so much unique stuff with AWS. It's, it's, you can do anything you want. It's incredibly flexible. Um, but again, that flexibility breeds risk. That, that healthcare company is by no means an outlier. They're really the norm for what we see as we start to analyze these complex cloud infrastructures. Uh, you know, as I mentioned, a lot, of, a lot of them use multiple clouds. They might have outsourced dev teams. So, and they're constantly spinning up new resources and uh, you know, developing new pipelines. And they're, they may be operating somewhat autonomously without a lot of oversight from security. We see this massive data growth year over year with new buckets, new object storage, you know, new databases, now AI training pipelines introducing new risk into organizations. Uh, and it creates this data sprawl and it can be really challenging to secure. I mean, we had this you know, same problem in the old on-prem world where data kept growing, permissions kept changing. We had permissions creep over time. It's really hard to keep this in check as our environment's constantly growing. Uh, so it becomes kind of a tangled mess of permission controls and you know, our bucket policies our ACLs, the, all of our identities and how they're accessing our environment, cross-account uh, you know, cross access in AWS can be very difficult to untangle all those layers of controls and understand how our data is exposed. So without a way to doing that, you're kind of flying blind. If you don't have a way to understand not only where your sensitive data sit, but who has access to it, who's actually accessing it, how are they accessing that data, you're rolling the dice on potentially experiencing a data breach. So what we found is that almost half of companies have data exposed in the cloud. And Microsoft did a very comprehensive cloud permissions report last year in 2023 and found that 99% of cloud permissions are unused. So only 1% of what any given identity or role is provisioned access to in the cloud is actually leveraged. So there's all this you know, stale or unnecessary access that needs to be rolled back. We refer to this as the blast rate. It's really the attack surface on your data. So another case study, this is, this is not a Verona's customer, but a, a cybersecurity software company. And they had a really big breach uh, recently. I'm not going to name names here to protect the uh, somewhat innocent. But what happened is they were migrating data to an AWS RDS instance. And they had a testing snapshot uh, that contained an AWS API key that was left exposed externally. And the attacker got access to that API key, ultimately exposing all this customer data once that migration was complete. So the really critical question here was, was any data stolen? Unfortunately, they don't know. They weren't sure. And this is the problem with not being able to audit data access is you almost have to assume the worst case scenario. Like if I know I have a compromised account and I can't prove what that account accessed, that, that again, that blast radius, every, all the data, all the resources that account can access, we have to assume is potentially in scope for this breach. So while we don't know if data was stolen, we do know that this organization recommended 13,000 plus password changes and rotated all these SSL certs and regenerated all these API keys uh, because of this single exposure from this one API key that was you know, part of their testing process. And I think something we see a lot, right? There's, when we're testing, when we're maybe uh, first figuring out a new technology or a new deployment, uh, some of those security policies uh, don't get implemented on day one. Those are things that maybe we implement later or we figure out because of what we've done in testing that we have other things that we need to control. Uh, but this is where we're really in a vulnerable phase uh, working with the cloud. And when we think about how threat actors operate, data is always the target, right? We might not know where the next attack is gonna come from. There's always new zero, vulnerable, zero day vulnerabilities. There's new uh, threat techniques that we see out in the wild. And there's all this investment made by organizations in securing the endpoints, securing the firewall. Maybe you have a posture management tool in the cloud that's trying to help close these posture gaps. Uh, but despite all this effort that organizations make in security, we still see data breaches all the time. Data kind of tends to be the soft, gooey center of most organizations. We have to operate in an assumed breach scenario and say, okay, we, it's an if. Uh, a when, not if, someone's going to get into our environment, how much damage can be done? How exposed is our data? So if you don't have that context, you're, you're really flying blind. And this is why we need 
data security posture management, and there's some very clear goals with the DSPM solution. First, you want to understand where your sensitive data sits. This is sort of table stakes for data security. I needed to have an inventory of where does my sensitive data sit, whether it's in S3, in EBS, it's in RDS. You know, I'm sure everyone here is not just in AWS, right? You have SaaS applications, maybe your Salesforce or Snowflake or Microsoft 365. This data can be anywhere. We need to understand where it sits. We also need to be able to monitor that data and analyze exposure. If I have a lot of sensitive data and it's really locked down, I'm doing my job. If it's exposed to external resources, it's exposed publicly, we need to understand that. I need to understand if we have contractors that have access to the data, do we have stale accounts with access to that data? I need to be able to detect ongoing threats as well. So again, it's important to understand where that sensitive data sits, but who's, who's accessing it? Is it under attack? And be able to actively close those security gaps because again, these cloud environments are rapidly changing. If we can't stay on top of this from automation perspective and continuously move the needle on that posture, then we're going to always have this technical debt that we're trying to catch up on. So there's a few different approaches to DSPM solutions, uh, starting with discovery only solutions. And these really focus on finding that sensitive data. Again, it's really important. This is kind of step one of any data security project. Let's go build that data catalog. Let's do that inventory. Where does our sensitive data sit across all of our cloud infrastructure, across our SaaS applications, even maybe still on-prem file shares out there. Um, but what these discovery-only solutions don't do is provide any visibility or control over the exposure. So it's, uh, again, it kind of helps us know where to focus our attention, but doesn't really provide us with any outcomes from a security perspective. And then there's a number of infrastructure tools. There's some amazing vendors here today that you know, help you uh, secure your infrastructure. Maybe look at the configuration of things like our buckets and containers, but don't have context for the data itself. So you know, if we go back to uh, that first example, that organization that had the exposed database, right? that was one misconfiguration, but that should be the highest priority misconfiguration for them because of the types of data that was stored in that database. So if we have the context of not just the posture, but the data that lives behind that posture misconfiguration, we're going to be able to effectively prioritize how to reduce risk in our organization. And then we have passive DSPM tools, which are doing a lot of the necessary inspection. They're analyzing the sensitivity. They're analyzing the exposure. But they require third-party ticketing system integrations and workflows to actually accomplish the remediation. So again, might be finding some, some good critical findings that we want to address, but there's no, uh, no way to automate that and it becomes a, a manual effort to, to churn through all of that risk. There's also obviously a lot of native tools in AWS, right? We have uh, Macy for classification, we have CloudTrail and CloudWatch, AWS Config, AWS Access Manager. These are all great tools if you know how to use them. You know, you really have to, I'm sure there's some very smart AWS people here today that know how to use all those tools, but uh, you know, we dealt with a lot of organizations that had that one guy internally. They had that AWS guru that knew their stack, that knew all of their, uh, you know, their cloud infrastructure, and then he leaves and they have this brain drain and now they're, they're lost, right? Um, the other issue with uh, some of the native tools is that they're native. They're unique to just AWS, right? If we have data in other places, we need to be able to protect our data wherever it lives, not just in AWS, but in other clouds and other SaaS applications. If it still lives on-prem, we need to address that too. Ultimately, we need automation. So all of these approaches to DSPM are gonna fall flat without automation. Simply there's too many people, too many different sets of permissions, too many identities, too much sensitive data that's constantly being created. You know, we have net new data created every day, whether organically or because we're you know, cloning data, we're doing database snapshots. You know, this data footprint is constantly expanding. There's too many platforms and too many data stores being added and abandoned and too much in short, too much ongoing change. So IT teams really have no hope of securing this without automation. Manual effort alone is just because there's always going to be this gap between the increasing risk and what you're able to accomplish manually. So what do we need to be able to automate DSPM? We need a real-time picture of risk, which I'll get into the details of what that really means. We need automated remediation, and we need proactive threat detection. So when we talk about real-time picture of risk, there's some key ingredients here. First, we need to be complete. We need a complete inventory of our sensitive data. There's some you know, technologies out there that might do some sampling, some 10% you know, depth, 20% depth, let's go find where sensitive data might sit, what are our likely sensitive buckets. 
This is good for broad discovery. It's not good for compliance. If I can't say definitively where all of our sensitive data sits and understand when it's accessed, then I can't prove compliance. You know, even from a security perspective, I almost equate this to, you know, you lose your car keys and you check only under one of the couch cushions and say, okay, it's not in the couch, right? You got to check all three cushions on the couch. You got to be, have a complete scan of where your sensitive data sits to really have an understanding, have no blind spots. This also needs to be contextual. Is that sensitive data exposed? Is it at risk or under attack? I need to be able to correlate that sensitive data catalog with an understanding of our compliance risk, with the permissions, with uh, you know, the relationship of the identities to our organization. We need to have an audit log of how that data is being used and by whom, where, why. Also very critically, it needs to be current. I think this is another challenge. You know, when we're dealing with large environments, it can take you know, weeks or months to complete a data inventory scan. We need that visibility to be up to date. You know, if I'm if only finding out what data is sensitive, you know, once a month, every two weeks, a, a lot can change in that period between scans. So this needs to be up to date. A lot of exposure can occur between uh, scan times. So we need this to be happening continuously and automatically. From an automated re perspective, there's a, a number of different risks that we need to address. Exposure is a big part of it. We want to reduce those excessive permissions, get to a least privilege model, reduce that blast radius. I'm sure everyone's focused on you know, posture misconfigurations, but something else I like to call out here is also third-party app integrations. You know, we've seen a number of compromises that came from risky third-party apps. You know, they have over-provisioned access. You know, app developers, if, if, they're, if they're lazy, uh, might configure way too much access from an API perspective. Getting to a least privileged model from an API perspective is, it can be kind of difficult. So people might uh, err on the side of granting their application too much access, and then that puts us at risk as well. This is like another user with advanced permissions in our environment that's even har harder to audit. So be able to revoke risky third-party applications, stale third-party apps. And then from a proactive detection perspective, uh, you know, this is, this is really critical. Attackers are getting more and more sophisticated. They're good at slipping past defenses. You have to be prepared for an attack. You gotta be able to detect stealthy attacks with behavioral analytics. You need full coverage of the kill chain, right? We need to be monitoring our, our perimeter, our firewalls, our, our authentications, the actual data access itself, the configuration change. And if you're able to have managed detection around this, you're gonna be even in a better spot. Most SOC teams are spread uh, really, really thin. They have so much coming across their plate. It can be hard to understand what threats to focus on, and that's why you need that context for the data as, as well, right? If I have 100 events coming into my, uh, my alerting system every hour, I need to know which of those impact our data, our sensitive data in our environment. So why do we need automated DSPM? In short, we need that real-time picture of risk. We can't be flying blind with these uh, you know, periodic looks into where our sensitive data sits. We need that automated remediation to close that gap as these complex environments continue to grow and what can be accomplished with a manual effort. And we need that proactive threat detection because we know threat actors they're leveraging automation. They're constantly poking and prodding. They want to get hands on your data, and they will. So from Veronis' perspective, this is exactly what we want to accomplish. We want to give you that real-time visibility, automated prevention, proactive detection. We've been recognized by Forrester as a leader in this space. And we've really been doing it for a long time, even before DSPM was a, a term. You know, We've always been focused on protecting your data wherever it might live. So if you're interested to learn more, we do offer a free data risk assessment where we will plug into your AWS environment, any other SaaS applications you may have, give you an understanding of that sensitive data exposure at scale. Understand your attack paths, whether that be an Active Directory across SaaS, map to your compliance regulations, monitor all the activity and also support from the incident response team that I manage so that we can optimize alerts on your behalf, watch all that activity and notify you of any suspicious activity that might be happening in your cloud environment. If this is interesting, our booth is right over there, so on your way to lunch, you won't miss it. We're right at the entrance of the cafeteria. Uh, and I hope all of you uh, are able to secure your data today. Thank you.